Hey guys, thanks for joining me for So What Sunday. Um, today I'm working on some gifts for the people I share an office with and I'm doing personalized coffee mugs. I was able to find some dirt cheap at Tuesday morning for like 40 cents so I thought it would be a cute back to school gift. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And really this in this video I'm going to be showing you how I modify fonts that I don't particularly love the way the letters naturally land. So the person's mug I'm working on right now is Mrs. Malave, and I'll have to create an accent mark because she will kill me if I give her a mug without that accent mark over the E. It's been a topic of many, many conversations. So I've typed out her name and I've highlighted the text. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to a different font and I'm thinking I'm going to change it to something in cursive. Magnolia Sky is my default, so I'm going to stick with it. And right now it looks pretty good, but there are some letters that I don't particularly love the way they've landed. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and select ungroup from my right click menu. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and select this E and copy and paste it and just drag it over here and you'll see why in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and work on her actual name. The way the letters land naturally on the font is the way they land, but if you don't really like the way they look, you can ungroup the font and just rotate it and resize it as you see fit. So I'm actually going to do that with a couple of the letters. The A's for one, because they're tilted quite a bit and I don't particularly like that look. Um, the E is fine, but the V seems to be hanging off quite a bit. So I'm gonna move that a little. And the way this S attaches, I don't particularly love, but I don't think there's a way to make it look better. But I am gonna go ahead and try. And if it's a disaster, I can just ungroup it. So this area of the R that's going up is going up quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off using the knife tool. And grab my arrow, select it, and hit delete. And then I'm going to move this S over and tilt it so it's a little more angled. And I personally like the way that looks a little bit better. So I'm going to move this over with it. And then finally, I can drag my mouse around everything, right click, and then go to weld. And I'm going to go ahead and center the misses on top of her coffee mug. Now that E that I copied earlier, I'm going to use it to create an accent mark. So I'm just going to go ahead and chop off this tail here, grab my arrow tool again, select it here, and delete it. And then I'm just going to manipulate this. So I'm going to turn it so that it's there and I'm make it a little bit thicker so it cooperates a little more when I cut it out so it's not really, really thin. And that's going to go there. Now the front of my coffee mug I've already figured out. This can't be bigger than roughly three and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and make this just a hair smaller. Because I'm going to be using heat transfer material, I need to go ahead and mirror this. So I'm going to select the entire image that I have here. I'm going to go to the replicate menu and select mirror right. Now this particular side of the image I can go ahead and delete and this is the side I'm going to be cutting out. And you heard me correctly, I am going to attach heat transfer vinyl or material onto a coffee mug. So that looks pretty good the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and send it to a silhouette and show you what the process looks like. So here is my cut piece of heat transfer material for my mug. And I'm going through the process of weeding this design out using my silhouette pick. I was very careful when I removed the large piece of heat transfer material from the inside of the design because the letters are so dainty and the lines are very thin. I did end up accidentally removing my accent mark, but I went back and replaced it on the transfer sheet for placement on my mug. 
Before I transfer the design, I'm going over the mug with Windex, just because I don't want any oil on the surface before I place the design and use the iron to transfer it off of the backer sheet. And once the mug is clean, I'm gonna go ahead and press the design down where I want it to land on the final product. And before I iron it down, I'm going to trim off the extra plastic. And this just helps the design lay down flat on the mug because it is a curved surface. Once that plastic is trimmed away, I'm going to take my iron and go over the design several times. Generally, I leave the iron for about 45 seconds to a minute and then move it over to the next section, going around the mug more than once. And you can see here the transfer material lifts up quite easily. And here's a look at the final product. So a link to the products I use will be in the description box down below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.